My name is Johanna, obviously. Um, I don't have Twitter, so don't try to tweet me. I work at the OF. Uh, I promised my boss to say that. So presumably you can hire me as a consultant and I will tell you what's wrong with your security and then how to fix it. There would be no more bio than that. Um, <laughs> If you want to know something, then ask questions. I generally like questions during my presentations, so feel free to interrupt. So this is implementing logging and incident detection, blah, 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 boring title. <coughs> or it is the tail of the presentation that failed. So it's my, because it didn't really turn out to be the way that I wanted it to be. Now the backstory to this is that we were trying to get speakers to an event about logging and apparently logging and incident detection is so boring that no one even wants to speak about it. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, or maybe it's so cool and advanced that no one you know, feels comfortable to talk about it. That could be the case. Um, so I said, yeah, I, I can be creative, I, I'll do something, <laughs> and that's the, the, the start. So I made a few presumptions, and logging is the topic. Demos are cool, because then you don't have to actually gather material, you can just show people stuff. And the Microsoft Windows <laughs> <laughs> is the shit. Is there anyone here who works for Microsoft? Okay, that's good. Then I don't have to apologize as much. Um, <laughs> so with that in mind, I went to set up a demo, and I realized I don't even have a lab environment anymore. Because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a developer now. So I went up to build a lab environment, it's sitting down here. It's my daughter, she helped me build it. She didn't get to actually <laughs> much of it, but she's four, so can't trust her with everything. And so the goals that I set out with were to show you how to set up logging in an enterprise environment, and that's why I chose Windows. If anyone knows of an enterprise environment with good client support and manageability, that is not Microsoft Windows, then you know, feel free to actually sell that to anyone because it doesn't really <laughs> exist. I think Google has something, but they probably won't tell you how they do. No, they should sell it if they have it. So I wanted to implement a few intelligent triggers to, let, to, to, to kind of let you know there, there might be an incident because this weird stuff is happening. And then I wanted to attack the system, and let's see what happens in the logs. Sadly, that did not happen. Because, you know, we'll see how it's fair. You'll notice that this scanner builds both. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of the feeling I had when I actually started setting this up. But there's a lab environment. I'm going to show you how to set up logging. Um, this is the domain controller. Sadly, if you're running an evaluation license, you can't change the background <laughs> in the menu for some reason. Um, yes, there's also a log server. And there's a client. I bet I had a client here. Okay, we'll figure that out later. Um, and so, this is running the very latest version of Windows Server. It's called 2016 Technical Preview. And I was led to believe that it would be very futuristic and like hot and spacey, but it's, it's not really. So, the basics for setting up a log uh, centralized log system in, 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 an, um, in an environment is to have 
one place where the logs go. So in this case, there's a log server. We have to initialize it. And I bet there's a GUI for this somewhere. Yeah? Yeah, everything in Microsoft is, I mean, Windows doesn't really have configuration files. It has small configuration utilities. This is the Windows event collector util that will allow you to QC, that is quick config, something. And the slash Q is to not bother with me with questions because I just want it to set up as the default. <laughs> and then you can start the event viewer thingy because they can't really name stuff. Oh, I brought this. And now it's all GUI from here. Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> so how many here are, are, are interaction designers? <laughs> This is not good interaction design, if you don't know it. <laughs> yeah, there's this co thing called subscriptions, and if you right click here, you can't do anything, but if you right click here, you can actually create a subscription. And we just call this log everything. Um, there's this concept of either initiating things from the collector, that is the log server, or actually letting your sources log things and then come to you. Um, that depends on your environment, whichever you should choose. I'm not going to give advice on that. Okay. So let's say that all... I wasn't actually logged into the domain. Let's say that all domain computers get to log, and then you think, well, that should include everything. Everything is a computer nowadays, right? Except that the, the domain controllers are actually so special that they have their own group for no real apparent reason. Um, and then you get to select what events to log. And in my case, I'm going to log almost everything because I'm doing a demo, so I won't have performance issues. Minimize latency is really good if you're doing demos, because otherwise you'll be waiting for the logs to propagate. So that's fine and dandy. <clears throat> but this said, source initiated, so we need some sources to actually initiate. And um, that's where we go to the domain controller. Now, there's this really nifty thing in Windows called group policy management, which allows you to define objects that manage your, your uh, computers. This is the reason you should buy Windows. <laughs> you know, forget about the GUIs, but this part is actually pretty good compared to what's out there. Um, so we'll create the log everything. GPO. How many of you have, have created a GPO? Yeah, there are some. How many of you are developers? There are actually some. Define developers. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Define <Developer> yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> okay, so there's a policy, a Windows component called event forwarding. And they have a really nice GUI for it. And you'd ex expect by 2016 that they would have some kind of selector for this. But no, it's a key value thingy without keys. And you have to supply it yourself in the string. But given that you managed to do that, you can actually have configured 
a target subscription manager, which will set up the subscriptions on all your computers. Now, this is where this part should have kind of ended. How many of you think that this is all you have to do? Yeah, yeah, I thought so. I'm not going to ask that silly question. Turns out to, to enable logging, you need what's called Windows Remote Management. You need that service to be running. Now, I'm going to set it up with wildcards here. You should never do that in your organization. This is a demo, and I really want this to work at the end, so yeah, I'll go with the wildcards. Now, you would think that we'd be done by now, <laughs> but actually, you have to open up a firewall. And this is perhaps the most perplexing thing of, of Microsoft kind of way of thought, because they actually have predefined firewall rules, and there's a predefined rule for Windows Remote Management that is not activated when you activate Windows Remote Management, because that would just be too easy. <laughs> now, you're noticing here, I'm, I'm allowing this on the public networks as well as the domain networks. That's because I'm running a virtual environment, and sometimes it kind of misdetects the network adapters. So, this is mostly to rule out any problem sources. Does uh, enabling uh, remote management open up for anything else other than sending your receiving logs within the domain? Okay, so did everyone hear the question? Sure. Yeah. Um, so it does, but since you are on a Microsoft Windows network, you are open to that as well. A anyhow, um, the increased tech surface comes from the implementation of the remote management service, but as long as you have active domain credentials, you will be able to access a, a client. Um, so there's a slight increase in attack surface, but remote management has been around for, for a long time. And I, I don't think it's a major point. So there's a small gotcha here. If, if you're running old clients or old servers, they actually don't have the advanced firewall you know, thing that came, I don't know, with Windows 7, I think, maybe earlier. So then you actually have to set up another rule in the old firewall. They won't show you that because I don't have that loaded. And you'd think we'd be done by now. <laughs> but I said I wanted to forward the security logs. Microsoft by default, divides logs into system, application, security. There's one more, and then there's forwarded events, I think. And to read the security logs, you have to be a member of a group called event log readers. That is not true for the other logs. You can read them free, but the security log. So we can go and set up a restricted group. Let's see if I type this correctly. Yeah, I tend to kind of uh, misplace the two first words. And to read this, we will have to add the network service, which is a local number, as well as the log server, which has a machine account, and in, in Windows, all machine accounts and with a dollar sign. Presumably because a client costs money, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> 
something about the licensing, I guess. Uh, and with that all set up, I think we should be... This is the time where I wish I could connect to my client. And now you will see me troubleshooting the demo. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I kind of get what, guess what's happened. I think my client actually powered off due to being like inactive for so long that... Yeah. No worries, it should boot faster. And you can see by the length of my passwords that they are not so secure. Um, I think I go ahead and... Okay, so how many of you have run this command before? Yeah, what this does is that it tells the client to update the policies from the GPO objects we created earlier. It will do it anyway, but this is a way of telling me to do it now, instead of wait for the, the predefined interval. And now we should be able to see some logs popping up at the log server, hopefully. What yes. is the frequency with which uh, GPO updates happen? Oh, the frequency of GPO updates, Both. that's configurable. Um, and I don't know the default value. Okay. Uh, I think it's th 30 minutes. 30, yeah, 30 minutes sounds about right. OK, so there are no events. Did I like forget to save or anything like that? Say so have to. Yeah, I also wanted to link because the domain controllers are in a different group. You can set this up the way you want. This is the default thing. So I want to log things from my domain controllers as well because that's pretty really interesting things. Did I mention that you should never be logged into your domain controller like this? This is like, <laughs> I'm doing this to show you what comes from the domain side of things and what's on the client. So it's like trying to, to separate that. Um, and there are no clients. That's too bad. I was kind of hoping this part would at least work. Um, let's see. Uh, so in Microsoft, everything is a command that gives you a GUI that you can semi use and then you have to. <laughs> So you should really take this moment when I'm like trying to get the demo to work to ask questions. Yes. Have you looked at the Microsoft's new offering? Because they're actually introducing a security monitoring platform. No, uh, I haven't. Themselves. I was kind of wondering because I know that this is a hassle to set up. Yes. And you basically you have to actually know with both Windows and Active Directory pretty well to do it. Uh, and I was wondering how much 
first of all, how much they have automated, and also how much, because I think basically uh, just looking at security events yeah. is not really enough. There's a lot of security related things going on that will never show up there, like application crashes and things like that. Yeah, we will get to the, because there are actually, I think from looking at the, the system events, you should get a good grasp of most of the attacks yeah. that happen. Yeah. Um, but I believe that they've actually automated a large part of the correlation uh, themselves. But this yeah. is only for Microsoft uh, networks. Uh, uh, but it's supposed to be free too, I think, which is also oh. really cool. Is it the advanced threat analytics? Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Okay, so the answer is that I haven't looked at that. But well, I think it's... Uh, <laughs> you do everything with PowerShell nowadays. Oh. Yeah, we do everything with PowerShell. And uh, I'm going to show you that. Um, okay, so this client doesn't seem to be wanting to be in the loop. Uh, we would have seen forwarded events. Now, my domain controller has connected, so at least that is working. Um, and you'll see that there are quite a few number of events. You'd think that a domain controller has a lot of events going on. <coughs> that is because we're not getting the security events from the domain controller. <coughs> now, why would that be? I mean, we made that thing with the local group but a domain controller doesn't really have local groups in the same kind of sense, so it's not applicable there. And so we have to make yet another stupid little hack. There's another util. Can anyone figure out what this is? Yeah, it's the Windows event something something YouTube problem. <laughs> And, and with that, we can inspect the security log. And there is a channel access property. And, and this is actually the security number of the, of the local uh, group. But, but uh, and actually, interesting enough, yeah, event log readers. If we read that, you can see that the network service has access. But somehow, because this is a domain controller, this is not enough. So the way to fix this, and, and this would be one of the things, I guess, that the Microsoft Free Tool would automate. I don't know. This being 2016 technical preview, I would have guessed they, they would have figured it out by now, but, but no. <laughs> And so we take the old channel access, kind of try to paste it, and then we have to add. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's <it's> obvious. <laughs> and you see, this somewhere here, my, my point kind of fades because I wanted to be like, you get all these tools in Windows that you already pay for and you should use them. <coughs> and then I realize why people don't use them. <laughs> and I don't know if the answer is to, to go buy some fancy magic box. I don't think so. We can talk about the magic boxes later. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, this adds the security log and, and if we go back to the forwarded events, a lot more events should start showing up in a bit. So we'll create some something that would kind of happen if you're under an, an attack that, that that is targeted against you and not your end user's credit card details, which is kind of the, the common attack that you will <laughs> encounter. Um, so one thing that attackers kind of like to do is to add a domain admin account. Now this is a simplified kind of example because there are better ways if you're an attacker 
to 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 get a persistent foothold than to actually add a domain user to the domain admin's account. But yeah, let's say we want to protect against this. So a good thing is to like test things out and see where the log what the logs say, and then we can work from that. So I created a test admin and I can yeah, I should have bought a keyboard with space. Um, we can add that and let's go to the log server and see. Did I have the log server anywhere here? Yeah. This has probably not gone through because even the main controllers are kind of slow at forwarding their logs for some reason. Yeah, and you see there's a bunch of more events. That's because most of the events from the main controller comes from the security group. And so there's one event that I'm kind of interested in. Let's see if it shows up. No, it didn't. Okay. Yeah, it did. Good. This is the event you see when a user has been added to the main group. And so this is the event that you all should be looking for. But as you see, there are quite a large number of events. <coughs> can't really sit and stare at the screen all the time. Um, the details are here. So it's that test admin account has been added to the domain admins. And of course, this is something that you'd want to be notified of. And that would be easy, you would think, if you're naive like me. Um, and there's actually a button for it. This is where all the GUI stuff's come. Yeah. Oh, -ho. Well, I'm going to regret typing that later on. Yeah. <laughs> and so this is the point where I almost started to cry. It has the option to send an email. Okay, okay. thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not bad. But but it's 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 deprecated. Why on earth is it deprecated? Why? I can see how you don't want to display a message on your domain controller, but why on earth can't you send an email? And there's no filtering options, so this would get you an email, like every time someone is added to any group because we haven't filtered this to be the domain admins group. So start a program it is, and it's not going to be calc. Oh, come on. <laughs> Although that would be fun. System 32. And for some reason, Microsoft hides PowerShell very deep down in the directory structure. I have no idea why, but there it is. It's good you have a GUI so you don't need to learn an arcane command. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so I'm, I'm so very pleased with this GUI. So we have to add like a, an, an argument. I prepared a few files that I should put here. Um, because I'm not going to type everything right now. That would be horribly boring. Even more so than just talking about logging. So, I prepared a little folder. There's a little PowerShell script thing in there because PowerShell is so cool. So, we'll run that. And we will want to pass what event happened because otherwise the script would have to pass through all the logs and try and figure that out. And for you developers, this seems sensible, right? It's like, why? <laughs> why? <laughs> why? What did you ask? <laughs> okay. 
And so it says we can we can open the task scheduler and look at our newly created task. And we'll have to do that because the thingy doesn't actually work yet, you know, because there are some other things that we have to do. It turns out that there are some properties that can't be set through the GUI. So the easiest way to set them is to create the task roughly the way you want it. And then <laughs> let's go ahead and export that as an XML file. And, and this is where my point totally fails. I get it that you're not doing this. <laughs> I've been telling people for ages, you know, set up some triggers in your centralized logging. Obviously, you're not doing this. So this is the domain group task thingy. And then we can edit, edit that with the editor of your choice, <laughs> or if if you haven't installed an editor, then, you know. And so there's this event trigger part here, where you can actually tell it to pass the value of the event record ID that it is triggered by. But this is not done by default, for some reason. So adding this little XML snippet allows us to actually use the event record ID in the command parameter that I defined earlier. This is intuitive, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is what you pay for, and you should use it. I think that point is so very bad, but... Um, yeah, and then... There is a command line utility for scheduling tasks. Because a Chrome tab file was too damn complicated, I don't know. <laughs> so you can lead and... How many days did you spend on picking this up? I actually didn't spend long enough. <laughs> the thing is that my... My, uh, my significant other, that's not good way to describe the relationship. What the person I'm living with has been sick for like more than a month now and has been to hospital. So they would have liked to spend more time preparing this. Honestly, I did in a day, I think. Um, yeah, and this is where we'll need the name of the task. Domain group number shape change. No. No, it's not scheduled task. It's task. <laughs> <laughs> because it just would be stupid anyways. And so we've deleted our kind of template task and now we can create our new task. Yeah, I'm not doing that there. It's okay. And yeah, hey, much success. <laughs> and you would think that then we would have gotten like sensible defaults, but of course this is not the way you're supposed to use this at all. So the defaults for a task running on a Windows <laughs> domain server 2016 are run only when the user is logged on. <laughs> Because that's a sensible default for the main controller, you know. We also want to make sure at this point, you know, if we happen to be running on battery, it, it happens. I guess it's a cloud thingy. Um, yeah, and, and if there's already a task running, we'll probably want to run a new one if a new log event enters. And there's the password thingy. That was really easy. That, yeah, yeah, this is like... I don't know how much time I've spent on this explaining it to you, but it's really easy and intuitive. 
You used to make that stuff. Now all we have to do is just all like the things you receive emails, right? No, <laughs> actually, I did that. <laughs> in advance, because I figured if you're running Windows in your organization, you probably already have Exchange. Um, let's create a new user, call it the attacker. This is the part where I would have liked to demo a real attack, but I didn't have time to prepare that, so. Uh, just pretend that this is an attacker using the domain controller to add an account, you know. Oh, I said you want that very correctly. And now let's head over to the client, and you'd think that I would start Outlook and look at the administrator mailbox. But, yeah, Outlook stopped working for me, and I, I, I can't really be bothered, you know. Uh, luckily, there's a web access thing in Alice, so you don't have to bother. If anyone is an Outlook expert. Feel free to have, help me with my lab environment <laughs> later on, you know. This is not looking good. What's wrong with the mail server? That is also important. <laughs> oh my god, yes, because I wanted to run everything on the fancy new operating system, but it turns out that you can't install Outlook on server 2016, because Outlook requires 2012 or some other versions, but, but not the latest. Because our mail server has been down. That is kind of bad, because then maybe mail would have been sent. Yeah, I'll add another account if you want, so you can... Come on. In the light, <coughs> for there to be a, a, an email. And for the main ones to learn, yes. Oh, there's no emails. I think what happened is probably that the script ran, but the mail server didn't respond, so it couldn't send. So, well, I figure I will have another try at this. No. That was too easy. You, c you can't use a weak password in Windows. <laughs> you need to use password one with an uppercase key. Yeah, be because <laughs> that would be so, so much stronger. Why is There will soon be a mail. So very much like for this to work because then you would see that it's it, at least it's possible. Get it to work. Right. Well, this is the long server, right? And that's the attacker to event. So most possibly it will have had a go. I didn't show you even the PowerShell script. Do you want to see the PowerShell script? Yes. <laughs> because it's it's really intuitive. You know, you would have written this in your sleep. Um, or rather, you wouldn't, because the thing is that even though you have like an event record ID, to actually get that from your log, you will have to conjure up an X path, which is a fancy way of saying you will have 
to insert XML as a string literal in your code, otherwise you won't get the results you need because Microsoft didn't bother to write proper like filters. Um, yeah. But basically that's all it does and then it sends a mail message. And it also writes to log file just so that I can see that it has run. And it has been running two times, so there should be a memory. But obviously... So it be in the spam folder? It shouldn't be in the spam folder. <laughs> but then again... <laughs> Like, this is where you do the question thingy. <laughs> <laughs> like, questions here. Yeah. Um, okay. Um. Maybe if you just try to send an email and see if the emailing is failing. Yeah, I was thinking I'll do I'll call the script manually because I have an event record ID somewhere here. Yeah, I have it somewhere. Here, I guess. Um. There's an event record ID. You can't really compute though, but you know, it's there. Um, it returns without error. Yeah, this leads me to believe that the main server is probably not working. Yeah, there's the mains! Yay! Woo! We just did one <laughs> Winning! Winning! Yay! Defense is so fun! <laughs> okay. I will make an argument for defense being fun later on. For now, this is a really good email to get. All of you who believe that, that your security team won't get an email like this if someone in that is added to the domain admin groups. You should really fix this because it takes less than half an hour or so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What do you say clicks on a week? <laughs> it depends. I mean I mean usually your mail server at work is up. Yeah, so yeah. There's a couple of steps that you don't yeah. have to go through. And, and it's a lot cheaper than buying a box that you don't know if it's going to do this or not. Um, this is a very simplified example. Typically, your, uh, your, your uh, domain uh, groups are, are kind of in a tree, so probably you will have a subgroup. Then, of course, you will have to... to, to uh, handle that in your script and you should make a script that does this automatically but you're mostly developers so I figure you should be able to PowerShell something um, yeah now the presentation <coughs> is kind of supposed to continue somehow this doesn't work <laughs> yay so what are the bad things that could happen if you do it like this your log could burn. Either like the physical server is supposedly backed up, but typically an attack might happen in a time frame so as to not be um, backed up in a timely fashion. And this is Windows, so you know there's a GUI for everything. And if I'm at the log server and go to the event viewer, there's a button to clear the log. You can do this programmatically. And clearing a Windows event log is, isn't that hard. Um, so typically what you should do is, is have a separated log server. I thought I would have time to show you this also, but apparently no. But there's a way to set up another log server that could very well run Windows and have it receive logs without being connected to the same Active Directory. And that means it would be separated. So even though your attacker has the main admin credentials in your corporate AD, 
he won't be able to affect the logs that have already been sent. <coughs> and then you would perhaps have a clue as to what the attacker was doing. So, the intelligent triggers that I talked about earlier, that I would have also liked to show you. Um, so obviously domain group changes, that's very good to be aware of. Both domain admins and other potential targets if you have domain groups that are sensitive. I know that some of you here use your AD um, to determine who gets to, to um, uh, log in as administrator on the, the production servers. That domain group should be, be monitored as well. And obviously this shouldn't exist, but I don't have to tell you that. Um, you may, I mean, if you do the fancy Windows thingy, you can audit Kerberos ticket creation. There are a lot of events in that security log. So potentially you could, you could see if someone creates a golden ticket or whatever the next equivalent of a golden ticket is, because there's bound to be several other interesting ticket creations. File access. You have to set up like auditing on file access, mm, but then you can monitor uh, what user reads what files, and that's a huge amount of data. But typically, you have some sensitive files and lots of non-sensitive files. And if you have done your threat modeling and security exercises, you know where your, your sensitive files are. And for them, you could very well create a small PowerShell script or other programming language of your choice to actually be notified when a user reads a file and then have some kind of limit. So it's, it's uh, okay to read 20 files, but not 1,000 files in an hour. Then there's probably some kind of data extraction going on. And of course, as an attacker, there are ways around this. But I'd say that the, the risk of your attacker taking those defense mitigating actions, like slowly extracting data, <coughs> are quite slim. I mean, attackers will get there, but right now they don't, they don't have to. Even state-sponsored actors extract all the data at once, because that's easiest, and no one is monitoring anyway. So if you monitor for like mass file, file reading, then you may be able to catch something interesting. Obviously this will, will have happened, but you could also create a, a script that revokes access. So like, you read 50 files and that's okay, but if you read more, then your account is inactivated, and that could save you in some situations. Pardon? Yeah, both ransomware attacks and I'd say internal attacks from, from some disgruntled employee or, or you know, otherwise, uh, um, yeah, the, the internal threat is it's good to, to keep in mind. So you can also monitor application logs. Okay, so the developers here, how many of you are sending events the Windows application log? There's one. <laughs> okay. I know it's an unpopular place to send your logs. Um, send them to wherever your security team wants them, but you know, this is a place where you could. So antivirus alerts would typically end up here, and that, that's also a way to, to identify an ongoing attack. Um, not because antivirus software is hard to trick, but because <coughs> an attacker is likely to try the easy things first and then move on to advanced stuff. AppLocker, how many of you uh, use AppLocker. Okay, how many of you know what AppLocker is? Well, why don't you use it? 
AppLocker is another great thing from Microsoft. It tells the operating system what binaries are, are good to run and what binaries are not. Oh, we're running out of time. Yeah, I forgot my clock. Yeah, I will have one more point and then there will be questions. No, there wasn't another point. Yeah, okay. So anyway, monitor for app blocker uh, violations and that should get you a good clue as to what's going on. Okay, so this is the finish line. Questions? <laughs> The, uh, uh, this is kind of off topic, but Zero mentioned the Kibana. Uh, could the Windows event logs be exported and imported into uh, uh, another log aggregator? Uh, if you don't, yes. you don't have to write the scripts and whatnot. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty so sure they can. Yeah. Okay, I think they're awesome. now trying to sell this advanced threat analytics. Yeah. And, and, uh, I've had a look at that, and uh, basically, it's a. Uh, my understanding is it's, it's a new shiny magic box from Microsoft, and, and you uh, you uh, port mirror all the traffic to all your domain controllers out to. So you, so you need one kind of collector per switch where you have domain controllers, and then you can also uh, syslog uh, forward the syslogs from various uh, instances. To this uh, threat analytics, and, and I think uh, this is what uh, Microsoft is going for. That's probably a really cool magic box. And th then they, they do this uh, correlation that you mentioned uh, out there. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I mean, I mean, of course you can just forward all all, all your logs to a, to a syslog server, and then from there to a CM or other log correlator. If, yeah. If you want. To. Yeah. That's what most people who do monitoring does. Why not use Logstars? Yeah. Can do that as well. Yeah. You can do that. that or you can use yeah, what's been yeah, doing. Logging service. Yeah. Input input plugins. Yeah. 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 If, if, if you favor Logstars or any other logging, yeah. Yeah. sure, go ahead. Yeah. But. If you're not notified when a domain admin account is created, you really should do your homework, regardless of whatever logging framework you use. Yes? Well, did you manage to avoid uh, buying a ticket for Redmond and start a run uh, in the middle of the Microsoft Office as well as you were doing this talk? Pardon? How did you manage to avoid uh, buying a ticket for, Red for Redmond? So you could start a shooting ramp at the Microsoft offices to prevent this from happening to somebody else. Yeah, I don't really have money for a ticket for a second, so you know. <laughs> um, also, I don't have the time, but I would very much like to go there and, and ask them what the hell are you guys doing, because everything is there in the operating system, and you know, if you just had one silly little wizard guide program thingy that set this up for you, then everyone would be doing it. And now no one is. And I think that would make Arvin very sad, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is super. Yeah. So, uh, thank you so much, man.